Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this turtle on recycled pine. It's roughly about an inch thick. This would have started life as a wardrobe or a table. We took five minutes just to sand it down, cut to more or less the size we need. We will sort that out later in the project. As always for me, we printed off our template. We stuck it down with painter's tape and we've got some nice carbon paper. I say nice, this piece has been used on every video. This has just got no carbon left in it, but for this video, it looks apart. So fresh carbon paper underneath, work out where your little template's gonna go and literally just draw around it. I normally use a pen, just so it stands out better than the pencil against the black. Once you've gone all the way around it, you can remove that and they, you can use that template over and over again. And there's our little pattern for today. There looks like there's a lot going on there, but that whip out is enough with a little CNC bit. You can also see I've made some kind of framing effect all the way around. So we'll end up cutting these sections off and cutting off there, straighten it up. Like I say, it's just recycled pine. And I've took a couple of minutes just to sand it down. Now the idea is to remove all your shaded areas today. Take your time to shade in the areas you want to remove. You'll go away, come back, and you'll start removing these lines. Well, that's the end of your project. So we're going to take out all these little shaded areas. And then we'll see how the project progresses. Depending on how it looks, we might end up removing all this background by two or three millimetres as well. And that way, we're going to incorporate resin into these sections. And could we've lowered the background, we can also pour a bit of blue resin in there just to give a bit of a sea looking effect. But we'll see how we progress. It might come to the stage where we filled all this in, cut it all, uh, sanded it all down and stuff. And we might just end up cutting it out completely and just having a shape like that. So we have a rough idea what we're doing, but things can change as we go along. So for now, we've done our template. We're gonna route out all the line sections. So we wanna go up to the lines Removing all these inner shaded bits and all those. And for those I use CNC bits. They come in different degrees. 10s, 15s, 20s, 30s. I think there's some 60s out there. They do have a small shaft on them. A 3.175 millimeter. That will fit a Dremel no problem. If you're using the Dremel router attachment. And it'll be okay for little projects like this. For anything bigger. You want a proper router. Mine is a quarter inch shank, so this 3.13, 3.175 millimetre is far too small. That's your quarter inch, and you can see the difference in thickness is there. So to make it that size, you need what they call a reducer collet, and it's basically just a tube, like so. A couple, couple of splits in, and your little 3.175 millimetre CNC bit slots into the silver end like so. That has now got... The same size shaft as your quarter inch piece. Obviously, if your router takes half inch, you're going to require a bigger adapter collet. This is 6.35 millimeter for a quarter inch router, like so. And the idea is we'll slide that into there simply, set it to three millimeters. I tend to use three millimeters on all my projects. I made a little gauge out of a piece of wood. You can buy depth gauges, and I know that's three millimeters because it just happens to be the same thickness, more or less as this CNC bit. And that's plenty deep for me. And I tend to use that on 90% of my little projects there in the shed. So we'll set that in, we'll pop that in the router. We'll set it to the three millimeter mark and we'll literally just start going around all these lines. These smaller ones, I think we'll just take these out with this little bit, this little CNC bit, 20 degree on this one. And that degree is literally just the angle of the cut on the end there. Let me just get that one in. They're going for it. There we go. So that's just that angle there, 20 degree. 20s or 15s are my favourites. So we've once we've done all the lines, remember, up to the lines, we'll remove that. I think personally, we'll just have the shell piece to do. And we'll pop on one of these end milling bits. These are ideal for clear out. They're the same size shaft, 3.175, remember, millimetres. So we'll simply just pop it in the same there, up to that little barrier. Like so, and we can use that now for clearing out with. They're ideal because they'll clear the side of the wood as well as the bottom. So you end up with a fairly smooth 
base as well as the sides coming out. Okay, so there's our two little bits we need for today. Later on, we'll have a look and see if it's worth removing this outer section. If so, we'll literally just draw a thin line like that all the way around and then remove all this area. We'll see how it looks like. But for now, we'll pop in the CNC bit and we'll start routing this one out. This comes in at 9 inches by 10 inches once we've took off the roof stuff. Okay, let's root this one out. Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around with the CNC bit and we removed the flippers front and rear, should we see, and around the face. The most delicate part on this one is the little speck there right in the centre of the eye. That's really down to the fraction, so we've got to be a bit careful around there. But so far it's coming out really nice. The only thing with recycled pine, you can get a bit powdery and dusty. Dusty, should I say? But we will go around and tidy all these up with a engraving bit. Just get inside and get all these bits out. But for now, we'll remove the remainder, basically, of this shell. All the rest we removed with the CNC bit. So it's just a simple case of finding one to fit. We can go for the biggest one because the large sections to remove and all those in there. So we just simply remove the CNC bit. You will get a lot more projects out of that what you pay for them and remember i just use cnc bits and end billing bits you might prefer to get profile bits or liner bits for your lines and spiral up cuts or cuts should i say or whatever else there is on the market to remove the other sections of wood just a personal choice i get these one because just ebay and they're nice and cheap and they do exactly the same in my eyes as what you would pay for one of your more expensive bits Remember, that's just my personal thing. Okay, we've got that in there now, onto that little barrier. And then we'll just set it to the same depth as any of these that we removed and basically just remove the rest of the shell. Right, you can see from that, we've made it all the way around with those end milling bits. And that's all cleared out nicely. Certainly no issues with that whatsoever. We will tidy this up with some engraving bits on the end of a flexi cable, similar to this one. And we'll go in there and just give that a general tidy up to get the dust out. And if we feel the need to extend some of these smaller ones, we can do that slightly with the uh, engraving bits. Now you can see from that, I've literally just drawn around it pre-hand, nothing fantastic, just enough to make a border all the way around. We'll probably round that off slightly there. Because the idea is I'm going to remove the back section as well. 
just so the turtle is raised slightly be three or four millimeters remember we've got our frame there so we're gonna to have to follow that line all the way around and then we're going to go all the way around the turtle itself so it's back to the cnc bits just make our first initial line out and then we'll pick on a larger piece i'll show you that to remove this back section let's pop the cnc bit back into our little adapter and we'll uh, go around the turtle again Right, you can see from that we've gone all the way around the turtle itself at about three millimeters depth, so it's literally the same depth as the turtle for now. Once we've cleared all this out, if you want to go a bit deeper, you'd bit as well just going over it all again. Don't go too far in with your bit, you can just put too much strain on the router and on the bit itself. And you notice there I've just took out each corner section, and we've obviously we've routed out the frame. Now I just did this free hand. I'm not too concerned if it's not perfectly square. It doesn't matter to me. These are just fun little projects. But for to do a straight line, if you're not too sure, now my router does come with a micro adjuster, basically a framework that slides underneath and you can use it as a gauge to run across. But if you don't have one, just a simple case of getting a piece of wood, something a little bit bigger, get a couple of clips on either end. You'll obviously have to use it on the end of the table because the clamps will be in the way. You imagine you've clamped that there and you literally just do it sideways on for you. You literally just set your router in that corner where you would want it. Put your piece of wood on like so. Put your little clamp at either side. And then you bring your router to this end and just adjust it to where you want it to be. Once you know that bit's inside the hole where you want. And you can literally just use that as a gauge to slide across to do your nice straight line. Remember, you left clamps hold in this place. And the same on this side. Put your router in that corner where you want your bit to be. Clamp that bit down. Bring it across. Clamp that bit down. And then you'll also have a nice straight edge to run your router in line with. And that should give you somewhere near a straight enough line. Like I've just said, I don't bother myself. I'm not overly, overly concerned for me. So we've got our framework done there as such. Remember, I will quickly cut off the edgings there and along there. So it'll be nice and square when we're done. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the surrounding area on the turtle itself. Now, you could use those end milling bits again and it will come off just as easy. But for now, we're just going to throw on one of these straight flush bits. These are other bits that I use. I'll put in a link to all these little bits. These are quite aggressive and you certainly wouldn't go in with a big chunky thing like that. You go in that, come with some delicate gear and it will pop that off while that's the end of your project. So I'm going to go for the smallest one, which is a one eighth, I believe, at the end there. Similar size to the CNC bit shaft at the end. And I'll use this just to set it to the same depth and then basically clear out all the surrounding wood. You notice I've removed each corner, like I say. That's because with the size of this, as you come in, you're not going to get a square corner, which end up being round. So we do that with the CNC bit, and then we just clear the rest out one of this. Okay, we'll pop that in, and quickly just remove the back on this. Right, that's all that background nicely cleared out. 
Now I'm going to leave this at three millimeters. Originally, I was going to go over it again and make it a lot deeper, but it's just enough for me to put my resin on the back. We're going to do all resin on this now. You can do paint if you wanted to. You could paint that and then sand it down just as easy. But I'm going to go for resin. So I just wanted a little barrier all the way around, literally to stop the resin interfering with that resin on either side of that piece of wood there. Now I was going to go a little bit deeper, but for what I want on these little projects, that's plenty. But if you are doing deeper pieces, do it a couple of t passes at a time. Don't go straight in deep or you'll be in trouble. You could burn your little motor out on your router and snap bits off left, right and centre. So just take your time with that. If it means going over it two or three times sometimes, that's just the way it is. Now the next stage for me, I'm just going to literally going to cut this edge down just to square it off. You can see our line there from the original frame that we're after. And then we're going to go around and give it a nice little sanding down. Firstly, after that, I will do an engraving bit. I use one with a nice flat bottom like that. And we're going to use this to go inside all these little sections. Just give a nice clear out. And then we use a bit of sandpaper just to round it off slightly at the edge. Give it a nice clean, tidy up. When we come back, this will look totally different again. And then we'll be on to the next stage of the progress. So I'll cut it off camera. Nothing's fantastic there. Band saw, and saw. I'm going to use a scroll saw personally. And then, like I say, I'll give it a nice tidy up with the uh, flexi cable, which is attached to a Dremel. And then we'll come back. We'll be on to the resin side of things. Right, that's enough sanding down and general tidying up for me. You see, we've straightened all those sides off. Remember, we've cleaned out all these smaller sections in here and we've done the shell. And I've slightly rounded it off just a little bit, but not too much over the top. Now, the next stage for me, just before we get to the resin. And remember, if resin's not your thing, you could paint inside these just as easy. And then you will sand it all down now before you put the final varnish on. That way you'll get all your nice crispy lines as we start off with. And you could leave the background as it is or simply paint it a nice sea blue colour. But for me, I've been I've rummaged through my drawers as I say. And I found a little bit of wood dye left. This is just a light teak. I'm going to put that on the framework just to separate it from the different colour of the turtle. And as in all my videos, good old boiled linseed oil, I'll use that to cover cover the turtle itself. And once that's all nicely dry, I'll spray over it first with just any clear gloss I can find. I have no preference. Whatever's going on the day is what I'm going to use. Now, regards to resin, why I spray first, the idea is we'll spray it nicely with this lacquer. One, it'll give us a nice shine on that wood dyed frame, we'll see there. And obviously on the boiled linseed, and we'll just spray the complete project as if it's a finished piece. One, like I say, it'll give it a nice shine, I do like a nice shiny finish. And two, it'll also help seal the side walls of the routed out section. So when we put our resin in, or your paint, it's not going to bleed into those side walls. And you won't get such a nice crispy line. There is wood sealers out there, wood finishers. If you want to brush in first before you put your paint in, once it's dry, you put your paint in, and hopefully it's sealed all those side walls. But for me, I find just a nice spray varnish to spray on first, just to seal that wood nicely. We'll do those three sections now, and then when we come back, we'll hopefully be popping our resin in.
Right, that's all our preparation and basically, apart from the resin going in, this little project's more or less heading towards the finishing line. Now with your resins, you have a couple of options. You can either just fill up level with the holes and the cutouts and just let it cure itself, leaving a nice lovely shine. And that's the method I'm going for today. Or you can slightly overfill, get a little bit of a doming effect and then sand it all down afterwards and have it flush with the wood. I want to still be able to fill the routed out sections. So it will be a simple case of just dropping a couple of drops into these smaller areas. And obviously we'll have more into the bigger sections here. And once it's cured, it will slight little dip in it once it does cure. But that's certainly no problem for us. We'll more or less try and fill them up to the maximum and see what we've got. Now you can see from the piece of wood that we've got here now in front of us, we used our little wood dye for the surround. We use a boiled linseed oil. Don't know why that's gone dark for. We're back in the room for the uh, turtle. And we've used a nice gloss spray for the surrounding area. Just to give it a little bit of a shine, as you can see from that. And also, hopefully we've sealed all these side walls. So we have no interference with the resin bleeding into the side walls. And that's it. That's all we can do inside the shed now. We're going to find some resin and basically... Just start filling this one in. Right, it's resin time. I'm going to use the Vista one today. I've tried three or four different resins. Let's just find one that works for you. Epoxy resin, if you want to call it that, comes in two parts. You have A, your resin, B, your hardener. The good thing about the Vista one, it's a one to one mix. So whatever we use of A, we'll use exactly the same of B. I like to use these just cheap, cheap party cups like so. They're ideal because they have small grooves at the side. And I just mark off, I've gone up five today for A, for the resin, and obviously exactly the same. We've gone up five for B, the hardener. So it's just a case of pouring those two into the two beakers and then mixing the two together have plenty of ventilation, have your gloves on, get a nice mask on and then we'll uh, give it a good mixing up and then add some colours. Now there is colours you can buy, pigment, dyes, powders, inks, I've got back of these that I really don't use anymore. I will use acrylic paints today. Just cheap acrylic paints like so and I'll just make my mix and then just dab a little bit into each one as we need it, the colour wise, and then generally just start filling this up. Now for me personally, I just mix with these cheap, cheap party nine forks and spoons. They are ideal because you get a nice little groove in the back there. So when you've done your mixing with your colour, you can take a little bit out and gently just fill that in. And I will fill that in mostly with the end of this spoon. I've certainly got no problems with that. If you find it a little bit awkward, I've seen people use syringes before. You can actually fill that with a resin and if you've got a good, delicate, steady hand, it is possible to go around and fill in like so. I've also tried these little poppets, I believe. Just cheap throwaway eBay specials. You can cut the end off and it is possible to suck a little bit up into the tube and then gently fill it in that way. Personally, both don't work for me. Just too much effort. There are smaller sections. I'll just get a large, oversized cocktail stick. And it's possible just to get some on the end of your stick like that. And just before it drops, over above, and just let it drip, drip, drip. It's going to be a slow process on these smaller ones. But hopefully, the end and result should be worth it. Okay, so I'll mix up our A's and B's together. And our two little marked off beakers. And then we'll add a bit of colour and basically just start filling this one in.
Right, that's it. That's all nicely filled in. We will see better outside in more of a natural light. I do apologise for the lighting in here. Now it's just a simple case of skimming over the top and do this as you put each colour in. And all that does is help release any bubbles that are stuck inside the resin. You can also get these bigger ones, but I just find this one a little bit too aggressive. Or you can get a smaller one like so. And I'll come back in five minutes time and literally just skim over it again. And hopefully it'll clear all those little bubbles out. So that's it for now. We're going to leave this for a good 24 to 48 hours. Put a cover over it. Put it to one side. And then just leave it. The longer you can leave it, the better. And we'll come back when hopefully this is all nicely cured solid. And this little project will be finished. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now it's only been 24 hours later, if that. And everything's nicely nicely set personally you want to leave this for another two or three days on some resin sites they reckon it takes 30 days for resin to totally cure i think that's a little bit over the top myself but who am i to know and you can see from that we've got a lovely shine on it all everything's nicely done if i was going to be critical there's a couple of little speckles i don't think i'm going to see it on here just there there's one little speck I mean, that's just being ridiculously picky. And if anything, these sections were a little bit small for me. They are brown and black and into the face itself. I'd rather they've been a bit larger, maybe two of those in together. So there weren't as many and they were slightly bigger. But anyway, it is what it is. And we've got a nice deep blue back of there. Just three different shades of blue just to let them find their own space and level and then sort it out from there. And that's it. And for hanging purposes, I've just routed in a slit in the back, which is literally near, excuse me, nearly the thickness of the wood. So that's plenty for hanging. So that's it. So it measures in at 10 inches by 9.5 inches. It's routed out on recycled pine. We use the CNC bits to do all our lines first. And then we went in with the end milling bits at a depth of literally 3 millimetres. And then we mixed resin with acrylic paints and just inlaid all these sections that we routed out. And obviously before that, we used a wood dye, light teak, boiled linseed oil, and then we sprayed it all with a nice gloss finish just to seal it all. And you can see from that, if I get really close up for you, just let it focus. There you go. There's no bleeding at all. All them lines are still nice and crispy and we've got a bit of a shine on the wood to be honest it could have gone two or three more coats on especially the side bits but for my little projects i've certainly got no issues so that's it greenback turtle we're going to call this one swimming in the dark blue sea thank you very much for watching